Hello, today OpenAI made a breaking announcement about a partnership they have with GitHub. So today I wanted to talk about it. I thought I'd drop a quick video to discuss it. What could it mean for the future of programming? Is this the end of programming? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna review the news, let's get started. So the first thing I see here is meet GitHub Copilot, your AI pair programmer copilot.github.com. It was announced on their Twitter. I think their CEO also was talking about it. So we can see it just like defining the function name and the code is automatically written. Uh, I guess using the Twitter API. That's, that's what uh, we see so far. When I click here, this is the sort of landing page. So it's providing a demo of GitHub Copilot where I guess it is like, you know, you write a few lines, it writes the next sort of the existing stuff we've seen that's possible with GPT-3 already, um, except it's integrated right into GitHub. Let me look at the other one. Again, so they're mainly showing just functions being written and uh, I guess the function name and the comment and then they're pressing tab or enter or something and then the code is automatically being written. We see some good diversity here. So there's Python, Go, TypeScript, um, and Ruby. Powered by, trained on billions of lines of public code, GitHub Copilot puts the knowledge you need at your fingertips, saving you time and helping you stay focused. Okay, so this is interesting. So it's already available today as a Visual Studio Code extension. Um, and so, so I guess before where I was saying it's integrated with GitHub, I think it's it's more like a, a code extension, although maybe in the future it will integrate with GitHub in more tight ways. Uh, speaks to all the languages you love, various. Um, you can cycle through. This is one of the benefits of GPT-3 as well, is you, you, could, you have multiple options, right? Like you can always, if you don't like one code suggestion or you don't like one output it gave you, you just regenerate and it will come up with more um, uh, it's more than autocomplete. GitHub Copilot understands significantly more context than most code assistants. So whether it's in a doc stream, comment, function name, or the code itself, it uses the context you've provided and synthesizes code to match. And they're working with OpenAI to get Copilot to be smarter and safe and effective. Awesome. Uh, converts comments to code. Autofill for repetitive code. That's super handy. This is almost like a like a spreadsheet, right? Like you fill out some stuff in the column, you push a button, and then it generates more. That's cool. Uh, great, it can write unit tests for you. That's awesome. And it can suggest alternatives. And I guess it's also emphasizing here that um, it already might have knowledge on different different kinds of tools or frameworks or things you haven't used before. What else do we got? Uh, okay, so many are already using it. Cool. Um, go straight into there. I, I'm not gonna go through the frequently asked questions, but I'm, I'll include the link in the description below. So I encourage you to check it out. Um, there's, I have two other articles here. So uh, Peter, Peter is the VP uh, at OpenAI, VP of product and partnerships. So he announced that it's powered by the OpenAI Codex model, which is a really interesting announcement, right? So this isn't necessarily GPT-3, right? I think GPT-3 can write code up to a certain level this is a custom model they've built, um, which they're gonna be releasing uh, th as a part of the OpenAI beta later this summer. And so I can't wait, I'm excited to give OpenAI Codex a spin just to see how good it is at writing code. GPT-3 is fairly good, but I, I think in my opinion, when it's more nuanced, when you are you have a big file, you know, like there's character limits to GPT-3, um, I'm interested in Codex, like is it, does it have the same limitations as GPT-3? And how good is the code that it writes? How nuanced can it be? And also, 
I'm, I'm interested in the cost and how much it was trained, how much uh, data did they really have. I'm even interested in the parameters. How many parameters is the Codex model compared to GPT-3 DaVinci? So anyways, yeah, this is so this is the announcement of a new model, uh, probably the first new model we've seen since GPT-3 DaVinci was announced last summer. I'm not including the Instruct series. Uh, and also we can see here that uh, Microsoft and OpenAI, uh, so OpenAI has a partnership with Microsoft and Microsoft also owns GitHub, right? And so I guess it's a natural partnership between the three organizations. The system called GitHub Copilot draws on source code uploaded to GitHub, which Microsoft acquired. Uh, researchers at Microsoft have been trying to teach computers to write code for decades. Um, uh, Nat Friedman uh, calls it sort of a pair programmer. That's sort of what I guess they're describing it experience wise. Um, stuff like, you know, saving time on reading the Twilio documentation. And it is a descendant of GPT-3. Uh, and Microsoft may release a version for the enterprise in the future. Okay, cool. So that in a nutshell is the announcement. I may upload a follow-up video where I actually test it out and, and let you know if it's available. Um, as a as right now as a code extension I, i'm not sure um and uh i just so i wanted to just discuss like what does this mean <laughs> so coding is a big space obviously right like uh it powers the world right for all of these different applications and also programming is, is a career it's something i do for a living and so on one level, I'm a little bit paranoid, like how, how much of code will be written by AI? What will happen to all those jobs? That's me on one hand. But on the other hand, I am excited to use this as a developer. I, you know, I, I don't think at the moment it could do like maybe 90% of my job, but could it, you know, make me faster? Could it make me more productive? Absolutely. But where it could go, depending upon how many parameters OpenAI Codex is, uh, if it's, you know, 100 billion, 120 billion, uh, I think it's a good aid. <laughs> if it starts getting to like trillions of parameters in size or something like that, then I, I do wonder, like, what would it be capable of? Would it even be a better programmer than me at that point? Right. Who's to say? Um, on, on one hand, I think it's very easy to be dismissive of uh, these kinds of AI models and their capabilities, but on the other hand, uh, they are they are improving rapidly. Uh, and keep in mind, it's only, it's barely been a year since OpenAI announced GPT-3 DaVinci, and you know they're already you know going into specifically writing code and the potential for uh, co for OpenAI Codex is it will be able to write code. Uh, and people who maybe might eventually who, who, who aren't even coders might be able to use it. Imagine just writing something and it would generate the entire application for you. Think about how many new kinds of apps and websites and businesses and startups we'd see. Um, and uh, think about what kinds of new technologies we'd be able to build, how much we could improve society. So anyways, like this is really exciting. I absolutely had to just put together a video today. Uh, and share it on the channel for all of you. If you like this video, please make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, I also have a podcast and a newsletter. I'm including the links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.